Wouldn't it be nice to be Blizzard's favorite child? Life must be so easy. But do you know what you have that those mages don't? Grit. That's right, you're a badass. A grinder who is not afraid to venture into the depths of LFG hell. You are proud to be off meta because you stick to your guns. Well, most of the time. Anyway, even a warrior like you needs a helping hand. So today, we're going to give you some tips on how to form the strongest groups, even if you play an off meta spec. But first, we have a question for you. What key level do you think group comp actually matters? We made this guide in collaboration with players from Echo, and they estimated that group comp really starts to matter at around the plus 23 level, and it becomes the most strict above plus 26, where the meta really starts to dominate. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And for those of you looking for a full dungeon cheat sheet, we just released our Atal Dazar and Waycrest Manor courses with the remaining dungeons on the way. In these courses, we've done the hard work for you and put together the most important tips that elite players actually use to master the most challenging parts of each dungeon and time the hardest keys. We also worked with Merez, who took the time to go through his own keys in a brand new course, where he explains his thought process and each dungeon one pull at a time. Along the way, he points out his own mistakes, showing you exactly what to avoid during your runs. This is a rare opportunity to learn from one of the best players in WoW history, and implement proven strategies into your own gameplay that are guaranteed to make you play better and smarter in your next run. So after this video, be sure to check out our brand new course at skillcap.com and learn more about our rating game guarantee. You can even use the links below for an exclusive discount offer to sign up. For now, let's get back to the video. First up, we have our least flexible off meta specs. But before we get into it, let's be clear about what off meta means because it's not a bad thing. If you play Mage, Demon Hunter, or Augmentation Evoker, congratulations, you are the meta, but you already knew that. If you play Outlaw Rogue, Balanced Druid, or Demo Warlock, you get a pat on the back too, but more on you later. Because of their strength, all of these meta classes or specs will fit into any group. But what about everyone else? If you want to make the best groups, you will need to fill in some gaps. As an Enhancement or Elemental Shaman, your defensive kit is a pretty big weakness, with Astral Shift leaving a lot to be desired. Because of this, you should aim to play with other specs that can provide strong externals, which could be a Disc Priest with their damage reduction cooldowns, or an Augmentation Evoker to press rescue like your Princess Peach. As long as you have some additional defensive coverage, you're halfway there to having a solid group. The other half is playing with specs that do uncapped AoE damage, since this is a weak point in Shaman's damage kit. This means pairing up with Boomkins, BM Hunters, Unholy DKs, Mages, or Sub Rogues for the best AoE coverage while hoping there is a Demon Hunter in your group to passively buff the rest of your damage. Warriors will ideally want to bear with classes that have uncapped AoE too, but are less limited by their survivability, which means you don't need to seek out any other specs that provide strong externals. Instead, what you're really hoping for is a Monk to give you a physical damage buff. DKs are very similar to Warriors. Your survivability shouldn't be much of an issue with your higher stamina levels, plate armor, and wide array of defensive cooldowns. Because of this, DK might be one of the lucky few who can fit into non-augmentation evoker comps, despite the fact that Death Knight isn't exactly meta in Dragonflight. Until DK gets a solid raid buff, its appearances might be limited in competitive content. And playing with a Demon Hunter is always going to be good for giving you that additional damage buff. Speaking of damage buffs, Survival Hunter is a bit weird, since its damage kit will benefit from both magical and physical damage increases, while every Hunter spec will also benefit from Battle Shout, since attack power will modify all damage. Of course, Hunter provides a raid debuff, but it isn't that impactful on most fights outside of Riddicron, where you are able to get full value out of Hunter's Mark. Just like some of the other off-meta specs, the main weak point of Hunter is survivability, which simply means playing with other classes that can provide big external cooldowns. But once again, this is mostly relevant in higher keys where damage is more likely to one-shot. And speaking of needing externals, Devastation is also quite squishy and is another DPS class needing some extra defensive support. Dev Evoker has a lot of utility overlap with Augmentation, so in many ways it's just a weaker jack-of-all-trades, lacking some of the defensive safety nets that make Augmentation so broken in higher keys. Shadow Priest is in a unique position being relatively tanky against magical damage, but much weaker into physical hits. And due to Shadow Crash having a target cap on VT application, Shadow Priest will synergize well with any spec that provides uncapped AoE damage. On the other hand, Feral Druid actually is uncapped on AoE and provides really strong utility and control options for any group. Ironically, this can be a bit limiting for the entire Druid class, as whatever spec is strongest usually winds up taking up the entire Druid spot, 
And right now, with the strength of Resto and Balanced Druid, both Feral and Guardian can feel more limited in comp building. Some DPS are going to be a bit more flexible, relying less on other classes to fill any gaps. This category includes specs that need less defensive support or are strong enough on their own to carry any individual weaknesses. Both Destro and Affliction Warlocks fit into this category. The Warlock class as a whole can be thought of like a substitute teacher. If any DPS called out sick, Warlocks are quick and easy replacements. Warlocks don't need any defensive support, but instead will simply benefit from any additional magic buffs. Again though, you can't go wrong with a Warlock in your group, especially given their relatively unique utility options, with Curse of Tongues being incredibly slept on this season given how many dangerous casters there are in some dungeons. Moving on, Subtlety and Assassination Rogue are also quite flexible, and are just weaker versions of their meta older brother. Just like Warlocks, the Rogue class as a whole is tanky enough to not need defensive support, while also having a highly unique utility kit that can add some quality of life improvements to any dungeon. Windwalker Monk is in a similar boat, and is arguably one of the biggest sleep respects in Season 3. Of course, Monk brings the valuable Mystic Touch debuff, which is the bread and butter for any physical damage comp. And with a well-rounded defensive kit, Windwalker Monks don't need much defensive support, making them a fantastic option in a wide variety of comps. Rep Paladin is also a very flexible melee, offering amazing utility while also being one of the tankiest specs in the game. Generally speaking, Rep Paladins always do amazing AoE DPS, with the only question in season to season balance being their sustained single target damage. Currently, Rep Paladins are doing very competitive DPS, especially with the Ashes Trinket from Smolderon, and as a high utility tanky melee, they don't really need much external support. Last up is Beast Mastery Hunter, who on paper is not nearly as flexible as some of the other specs in this category, but are strong enough on their own to compensate with damage. Beam Hunters are a pure physical damage class and will have great synergy in any physical comp, with the main downside being that the class is incredibly squishy. Because of this, it might be beneficial to pair any hunter with other specs that can provide strong externals, in order to avoid those very common one-shots we are seeing in high keys this season. But before we recap, we quickly have three honorable mentions for DPS that are potentially meta. As we just mentioned, Outlaw is currently the best rogue spec with high consistent damage for the entire dungeon, with the ability to simply press W and not die. Right now, there is definitely an argument to be made that Outlaw belongs in the big three, but doesn't provide quite as much utility as Mage or Augmentation Evoker. On a similar note, Demonology Warlock is also an honorable mention and another possible replacement for Augmentation Evoker. You can count on the spec doing great damage while also never dying, which is exactly what you need when trying to break the meta. Finally, Balanced Druid is our last honorable mention, but unlike Outlaw Rogue and Demo Warlock, is much squishier in higher keys, which doesn't make it the best replacement for Aug since the Druid toolkit is so stacked, but it is a great option in most comps, especially with Vengeance Demon Hunters. Thanks to the combination of Solar Beam and Double Sigils, which allows for massive pulls where Boomkin damage can really truly flourish. And with that, we have our rundown of what group formation is looking like in Season 3. The higher a spec is on this list, the more flexible they are in comp building. And just as a quick rundown of the meta, Mage is probably the MVP of Mythic Plus after recent buffs. It's got everything you need, good prio and AoE damage, an insane defensive toolkit, and a great raid buff. And one of the strongest but most slept on defensives in the game, Mass Barrier. This button is like a cheat code highly efficient and providing insane defensive utility as a pure DPS class. We don't need to say much about Demon Hunter. After their rework, Havoc and Vengeance are virtually part of every group, bringing amazing damage, survivability, and control, with one of the best damage buffs in the entire game. Finally, Augmentation Evoker is obviously strong once again, and potentially required for the highest keys, but some groups have managed to push without one with Double Fire Mage. To play without an Augmentation Evoker in the highest keys, you need some tanky classes that can survive on their own. If you happen to play a spec lower on this list, you might need additional defensive coverage or might be more reliant on external damage buffs to perform well in higher keys. Healers are a bit less restrictive overall compared to DPS, and here we only need two categories. While any healer can work with virtually any comp, some might perform slightly better with more melee in the group. Restoration Shamans, for instance, will maximize their healing output with more melee because of healing rain. When friendly players are more spread out, it becomes harder to benefit from this AoE heal. Resto Druids will see similar returns with melee-centric groups because of efflorescence. When players are spread out, it becomes a bit awkward to maximize healing with Verdancy, which is a massive source of HPS. 
Druids will also work well with Windwalker Monks for the additional physical damage multiplier, and even have some unique synergy with Brewmaster, for a key reason we will discuss soon. But before we do, Preservation Evoker is our third healer which we can see some sort of quality of life improvements from a melee-centric group. With limited range and with cone-shaped heals, it helps when your party is in one general location. While it might seem that Mistweaver Monk would prefer melee, Ancient Teachings was actually buffed in 10.2 with increased range. So even though Monk might be at the core of physical comps, Mistweaver can slot into any group. Again, any healer can work in most comps, and the main thing every healer wants is for DPS to press their defensives. That leaves tanks as the final role to cover, and here we have a similar breakdown. Right now, Prot Paladins and Vengeance Demon Hunters are obviously the two meta tanks, with Paladin being the most flexible. This is your standard safety pick, bringing tons of defensive tools at the cost of some damage output. You really can't go wrong with a Paladin at all, especially if your comp has specs that need additional defensive support. Vengeance Demon Hunter is the other meta pick. Historically, the spec needed a lot of defensive support, but after the rework in 10.2, DH is a beast of a tank on its own. You can play with any comp, but provide lots of direct benefits to casters, like a damage buff with Chaos Brand, and multiple stops that help cover any longer kit cooldowns. That leaves our off meta tanks, with some being more flexible than others. For instance, Blood DKs will work fine in most groups, but might be a bit more reliant on having a strong external in the group. While Blood DK is one of the most self-sustainable tanks, it is still prone to one-shots, so having an additional safety net is preferred. Guardian Druid is also quite flexible, but simply lacks damage in higher keys. Of course, the entire Druid class provides great utility for Mythic Plus, but in order to push higher keys, you will definitely want some damage pumpers. Prop Warrior can be a generalist, but leans into melee comps. With Battle Shout, Warriors are very appealing to purely physical DPS. On paper, Warriors could be one of the best tanks right now, especially considering how much spell reflect tech there is in some dungeons like Waycrest Manor. That leaves Brewmaster Monk as our final melee-leaning tank. As we mentioned earlier, BM Monks have some great synergy with Resto Druids due to stagger damage essentially being cancelled out by healing over time effects. Throughout this video, we've been teasing the idea of comp archetypes, so let's wrap things up with an explanation of the differences. On one hand, we have physical comps, which at their core are defined by a combination of Mystic Touch from Monks, Battle Shout from Warriors, and even the accessory Wind Fury Totem from Shamans. Any physical damage dealer will want these buffs for optimal damage. Magical comps are defined by similar buffs, like Chaos Brand from Demon Hunters, Arcane Intellect from Mages, and the accessory Power Infusion from Priest, which we're including here since many casters scale exceptionally well with Haste. Beyond this, there are general defensive raid buffs that will be valuable in any group, including Mark of the Wild from Druids, Devotion Aura from Paladins, and finally, Fort and Lenience from Priests. Specs that are on the squishier side will get big value from any of these buffs. Before we wrap up, we want to remind you that we have brand new dungeon courses where you can learn the most important tips that elite players actually use to time the hardest keys. We also had Meraz put together full commentaries for every dungeon this season, which can only be found at skillcap.com. In this brand new course, Meraz explains his thought process behind every pull and even points out some of the most common mistakes that players make when navigating pushing higher keys. This course goes hand in hand with all of our class guides, which teach you high level information you need to do the biggest damage, while also learning how to abuse mechanics that increase the value of your entire toolkit, including CC and survivability. All of this and more is why Skillcap continues to offer a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will be able to increase your IO score while using our guides. So if you want to stay ahead of the competition this season, visit skillcap.com using the link below. Until then, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.